Hi, this is Jeff Sloss. I'm here at the Zoller Video Lab. We're looking at a Pivot Pro control panel here. What we're gonna do is uh, show you the alarms for a Pivot, Pivot Pro, and Pivot Pro Plus. They're all really the same alarms, except that the Pivot Pro and Pivot Pro Plus have a couple additional alarms, which we'll address during the video. Now, if you look in your owner's manual, you're gonna see an alarm condition table. And this is the Pivot Pro manual, it's on page 10. In the Pivot manual, it's on page nine. Um, but what you can see here is the, the name of the alarm and like what the various things on the panel do. So like how the globe blinks or what LEDs might come on, what the horn is doing, whether it's latched or not. And latching just means that the alarm is gonna persist until you acknowledge it by resetting the toggle here. So we're gonna go through this and I'll just show you what those things are and basically what causes it so you know what to do if you encounter it. So the very first one listed is the overload is tripped. And that would only be on three phase panels that have overloads. So if I trip an overload or something in normal use trips the overload, this is what it looks like. And by pressing the toggle right here, I can silence that alarm. This is tripped. You're gonna get an alarm, a, a, a globe here. The alarm is gonna sound. And you'll notice on here it says, it's a fast blink. So that's what we call a fast blink. I'm gonna reset this. If I were to reset this with the toggle, nothing would change except the, the horn would come back on because this is still tripped. This is a manual reset, basically. I'm gonna come up to it and I'm gonna turn it back and it's just gonna clear itself. I don't even have to clear the alarm. So that, that is the first alarm condition. Okay, so the second alarm is for a failed contactor. And what we're doing is we're monitoring these contactors with these wires and these wires. And you can see on your schematic what numbers those are, but I'm just gonna simulate as though a contactor did fail because I'm gonna pull this monitoring wire out. And that's gonna create an alarm. Um, and what that's good for is if our switches tell the, tell the panel to turn a pump on and the pump can't, and the panel can't turn that contactor on, we're monitoring it so we can see that that has occurred. I'm just simulating uh, an error here, but this is what it would look like if you had a failed contactor. The globe would be going, your uh, pump run LED would be red, and your screen would say pump one contactor. So I'm gonna go ahead and put that back together. The next alarm on the sheet is called service off timeout. And basically, if we were to put our HOA modes into off like this and walk away, the default is that after four hours, we get an alarm. So here's what that looks like. The globe would double blink and it would go into an alarm with the horn. So we can silence it with the horn here, but we would basically turn it back to auto if we had accidentally left it in off and there's a longer explanation of what service off and permanently turning off that alarm mean. And you'd wanna reference our other videos or the instructions for that. The next alarm on our list is called disabled alarm circuit. And what this means is that when you bring power into your control panel, you're landing your control circuit power right here. I'm doing it with a, a cord separately here, but and that isn't necessarily what it's gonna look like in the field, but we've got it run in right here. And then you'll see this red jumper wire, and that's jumpering the power down to the alarm circuit. If you didn't have that alarm circuit jumper in or a separate circuit powering the alarm circuit, then you're going to get an alarm. And basically what the alarm is gonna look like is this. I'm gonna pull the alarm fuse out which does the exact same thing as if we didn't have the alarm circuit powered. So I silenced it. I've pulled out the fuse in the alarm circuit and this is what it looks like. It says AC alarm right here. So, and all these lights are on and we have our globe doing a double blink. I've put the alarm fuse back in and we'll move to the next alarm condition, which is continuous run. The default setting on the continuous run alarm is for 20 minutes, which is probably too long for most installations, but that is the default. And we suggest that you reduce that number or increase it if, if it's applicable, but typically you'd be reducing that number 
to something that makes more sense for your, for your application. You basically want an alarm at the amount of time that the pump's running continuous that would be more than a normal run cycle. So if your normal run cycle is a couple minutes, maybe you set it to five minutes so that you get an alarm if there was a continuous run for some reason. So I'm gonna set that up. I've changed mine to one minute. I'm gonna lift those floats over there to get my quote unquote pump to start running. And then after a minute, it'll go into alarm. I have two of the floats, the stop and the lead pinned up so that after one minute of runtime, this will go into alarm. So a pump is running because I have the stop and the lead pinned up and this alarm should go off any second now. So that is our continuous run alarm. Pump two was engaged because it was next in line in the alternating sequence. The alarm went off, so I silenced it here. We'll notice that our globe is on solid. And the, re the remedy of that is to find out why our pump is running continuous. Now, even after the pump floats come down and the pump turns off, we're gonna get this pump run continuous LED blinking amber. That's gonna be our indicator that the pump had run continuously. So our screen says pump two continuous run. And what'll happen is when I lower those floats back down, that blinking amber LED will continue until I reset it. So it's still blinking. I'm gonna reset, acknowledging that that alarm occurred. And now everything's back to standby. All right, the next three alarms on our list are related to float logic. Really all three are going to be triggered by an illogical float sequence. So if the floats come up or they lower out of sequence, that's gonna cause these alarms. So the three listed on our sheet are high water, float logic error, float logic error, and float questionable. They all show a slow blink of the globe. The high water for the first one will be blinking red, and then I believe the, the float errors will blink red on the ones that, on the floats that it does not like. The float that came up or down out of order. So to demonstrate this, I'll lift the lead float. The lead float is above the stop float, and I'll leave the stop float down. So you can see I lifted the lead float. The stop float is down. The horn was going, I've silenced it. The globe is blinking a slow blink. The stop float, which is the guilty float in this situation, is blinking red and the screen says float one. Of course, anytime I'm referencing the screen, you don't have that on the pivot versus the pivot, pro. this is a pivot pro, but you still have all the same LEDs, the same horn and globe behaviors. Okay, so we've cleared the alarms by lowering the float and then holding the, the silence toggle down. The next alarm is called the high water alarm. And just to be clear, this is a duplex panel with a three float setup with a jumper between the lag and high float. So there's another video that explains the differences between simplex and duplex floats and, and how they're set up and whether you want use a jumper or not and whether you use three or four floats and what the float order is and all those kinds of things. For the purposes of this demonstration of high water, I have a three float with a jumper. This is a duplex station. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna raise the stop, the lead, and the third float, which is lag and high. And we'll look and see what that does. Okay, so here we are with all of our floats in the up position. We have stop, lead, and high. You'll notice our stop, lead, and lag are all green. Lag and high water are the same float because of our jumper here. The high water is red. Our screen here says it's in alarm for high water. We'll also notice that both of our pumps are running because we have it in a duplex mode where they can run simultaneously. And the globe is doing a slow blink. All right, I'm gonna lower the floats now. This is the high water. Here's the 
lead float, stop float. And you'll notice that we retain the high water alarm and the globe and the horn would be going if we hadn't silenced it. So this is what somebody later might walk up on. Things are back to normal operation, but we've retained or latched the high water LED here and in the screen and on the globe. And of course, like any alarm, if you're going to reset it, put it back to standby, you're gonna hold the toggle down for several seconds and it's back to standby. The next two alarms are called seal fail and thermal. Those are not going to be on a pivot, only on the Pivot Pro. I'll demonstrate what those look like. So I've set the panel up so that we can recreate a seal fail alarm. And I've done that simply by throwing a jumper in there across where you would normally land the seal fail wires. So I'm gonna go ahead and power this up. It'll immediately go into alarm. And we can see that the seal fail alarm results in the pump run indicator blinking red. The globe is fast blinking and the pump two seal fail message is on the screen. The purpose of the seal fail alarm is to tell you that the lower seal may have failed. Gives you time to get that fixed before water potentially moves past the second seal. So in this situation, the pumps would continue to operate in the alternating sequence unless you changed a setting in the menu that tells it not to. But that's what this is for, is for a seal fail. There's also a seal fail adjustment screw for each of the pumps. And you can read in the manual what those are for as well. But this is what a seal fail alarm looks like. The next alarm is a thermal alarm. Your thermal wires would land on the board where it says TH2 and TH1. It'd be a pair of wires on each of those. I'm gonna simulate a thermal alarm by taking one of the pre-installed jumpers out. By doing that, I'm simulating a thermal sensor in the pump opening. And with that thermal sensor opening, it just means that the pump got hot for some reason. And this is the result of what it looks like in the panel. So you have a blinking red LED for pump run. You have the globe fast blinking and you have P2 thermal. That's your indicator for the thermal alarm. We are now at the last alarm. And keep in mind, those previous two alarms, the seal fail and the thermal, are not on pivot. They're only on the Pivot Pro, which we have here, and the Pivot Pro Plus, which is basically Pivot Pros in a bigger box. So the last alarm is called the high control voltage. And we can't demonstrate that alarm because I don't have any way of putting 220 volts to the control circuit. So if you did have a high control voltage, meaning you put the 230 volts to the control circuit instead of 115 volts, what would happen is you'd have a, a system ready LED blinking green. It would be an alarm. There would be no globe action, just the globe would be off. So that would be your, the, that's the last alarm we we're gonna review on this table. So hopefully that review of alarms helps. I wanna reiterate the three most common alarms. Probably the most common one is missing out on powering up the alarm circuit. That's number one. So when you see that, that's a very common mistake. So the second most common fault is a float fault error. And that can happen just by raising or lowering the floats out of order or out of sequence. And that can happen while you're testing. So you just wanna be aware of that. And the third alarm that occurs, it's not that it occurs commonly, but we want you to think about it, is the continuous run alarm. So you wanna adjust that to a, uh, a timer that makes sense for your uh, application. So hopefully that was helpful. If there's more information you'd like to learn about Pivot, we have plenty of videos on our YouTube channel. You could also go to zollerpumps.com.